Hi everyone, thanks for watching. The video you are about to enjoy reflects my opinion and my opinion only, and does not reflect the views of the wonderful staff at the Daily Beacon or anyone associated with the University of Tennessee. Hello, soon to be faithful viewers. I'm Jared Nelson, and this is Socialized on TV where it belongs. I'm not really used to saying my words out loud since I write my column in complete silence with nothing but Gatorade and a nice Joe Biden mug to keep me company. So if my presentation of the spoken word isn't quite up to par with my presentation of the written word, then you can blame me. And you can send that complaint and any other comments about our wonderful new show to my email, jnelso47 at vols.utk.edu. See, the 47 means that I'm the 47th J. Nelso to pass through this university, but I do think I'm setting a record because I'm pretty sure I'm the first one to have his own TV show. But either way, let's get right into this thing. You see, I wasn't sure what to lead with at first. I, I looked around, I played some Regina Spectre, and then I took a walk, and then I stumbled into this massive conspiracy. Seriously, it was just lying on the ground outside my apartment, right next to my stolen bike that I do miss dearly, and a bag that said, your dreams. And it's a conspiracy that gets to the heart of Lex Luthor's only point in Batman v Superman, which is that power isn't innocent. Thankfully, I don't feel the need to rip off Heath Ledger, and I can give this story to you straight. So today's story is about corruption. Corruption at our third or fourth highest level of government, depending on how you look at it, which, okay, yeah, that sounds underwhelming, but I promise it affects you much more than anything going on in that ridiculous dick measuring contest at the first level of government. You've all probably heard something about privatization in the last year or so on campus, but you might not have had that word explained to you. Privatization, believe it or not, has absolutely nothing to do with covering up that aggressively awkward space a bathroom stall door doesn't take up, but instead has everything to do with how that bathroom is cleaned and how your room is cleaned, and who throws away your 20 cans of Monster after a radical night of league where your friend just couldn't keep up with your dominance. And that's a real shame about your friend, because I'm sure he made well, a decent clan member at the least. But this privatization on campus is about facility services. Governor Bill Haslam has proposed giving control of the management of that crucial area of campus to a private company. Haslam says that this will save the state money in the long run, and he says he knows this not because he is an uber-rich deity of Tennessee who can rename buildings with merely a wave of his big fat wallet, but instead because, well, would you look at that, he's done it before. See, back in 2012, a Chicago-based real estate firm called JLL won a bid with the state for a million-dollar contract to manage and improve certain aspects of state capital facilities. Sadly, JLL stands for Jones Lang LaSalle, which is a very generic firm name that is nowhere near as interesting as the comic book I will eventually write called Justice League Louisiana, which you can now pre-order on my Facebook. But JLL's contract quickly ballooned from that initial $1 million to a final $7.65 million through amendments, which Comptroller Justin Wilson noted involved heavy lobbying by Haslam's chief of staff, Mark Cate, who you'll need to remember. But why is this important? Why should you care about Mark Kate? Well, you should care because it is public knowledge that in 2010, the year he was elected governor, Bill Haslam had a financial stake in JLL exceeding $10,000. And somehow, that's not a bombshell. To me, that's the equivalent of running into the student union and yelling, fire. Some people, like me, are really going to take notice. But for some, the creed they're blasting is immune to even the worst of artificial screaming. It's not, though, I swear, because Creed couldn't even survive the 90s with their reputation intact. Now, Haslam's investment may have been public knowledge in 2010, but when he took office in 2011, he put his investments in a blind trust and then obviously forgot all about them. Well, that's not fair. I guess it might be blind in the sense of, I can't see it now, but I've seen it before, and the it is a T-Rex. See, once you've seen a T-Rex, it's not like you forget what a T-Rex looks like especially when that T-Rex is making you money. And boy, did they make money. JLL soon recommended that the buildings they were managing be demolished due to inadequate facilities and told the government, hey, move into these nicer buildings over here that we just happen to own. 
That's like walking into the house of a girl you met last week and recommending that she moves in with you because the Property Brothers renovated your house and you've got two ovens for when you entertain. But what's really entertaining is the numbers on all of this. JLL says that they have saved the state 12.9 million since they got the government to move in with them. But those numbers are not based on comparing how much the state was spending before versus how much they're spending now. Which is really weird, because when you look up comparison in the dictionary, its definition is the actor instance of comparing, which seems really straightforward, but apparently is not for Jones Lang LaSalle, because their money saved number comes from looking at what they spent versus at what they thought they would spend. And when asked why there is no comparison between pre-JLL and post-JLL numbers, Department of General Services Deputy Commissioner John Hull deemed that comparison irrelevant. And that's very interesting, because when I tell the government my income has gone down and I get to pay less taxes, and they ask, well, how much has it gone down? I didn't know that I could just say that question is irrelevant and say that I made less than I thought I would. But we need to recap. I have been talking for a while after all. So Bill Haslam had a stake in JLL. And during his terms as governor, JLL has seen huge government contracts come their way at the cost of state employed workers, seen those contracts blow, and then not been able to say whether those contracts were a good financial investment because it's irrelevant. Now I'm sure those people who were fired because of those outsourcing plans would have quite a different word for it. Now of course, this isn't even to mention that the board who votes on granting these contracts consists of only three people none of whom are elected, but some of whom are familiar. Mark Kate, Haslam's chief of staff, who you'll remember, is on the board, along with Larry Martin, Haslam's special assistant and now acting finance commissioner. And then there's a third guy who doesn't matter because we've already reached a Haslam majority. Sort of like how that third guy in your group project who you see on the day of the presentation for the first time doesn't really matter to YouTube getting the work done. All that matters is that he and you probably understand exactly how this situation is going to go the first time you see him wear that drug rug for the third time that week. But why does this matter to us here, specifically as students at UT? Well, it's because they're trying this again, and it can affect not only the livelihoods of the campus workers that clean up after you every day, and some of us are disgusting, I know, but also your life at this university. You see, back in August, specifically on August the 10th. Bidding opened for a plan to privatize almost the entirety of facilities management across the state government. And then on August 21st, that bidding closed 11 days later. This is a plan that would require a single company to take over the management of an entire statewide apparatus. And the bidding for plans lasted for 11 days. It's almost like in order to get a bid in during that time frame, you would have had to know that such a request was coming through like a pre-existing relationship with the exact department that you've already accepted contracts from in order to have such a comprehensive plan ready. In other words, it's, it's almost like you're Jones Lang LaSalle. Of course, we're not allowed to know who bid until the contract is actually accepted. So whoever came up with this plan is confidential and the General Assembly of Tennessee, you know, the people you elected to run the state, haven't seen the plan yet either. And indeed, all we know about this plan is that it's supposed to somehow save almost $36 million if all state employees are kept on at the same wages, which almost certainly wouldn't happen, or $58 million if state employees are let go. Now, let's forget for a moment that $36 million accounts for exactly one one thousandth of the state's budget and instead focus on what they're saying. These numbers of theirs are based on the savings from new worker training and increased buying power. And considering that the only thing I can think of with more buying power than a state government is the federal government, it's okay to be a little skeptical of that too. And most UT officials certainly are. Dave Irvin, Vice Chancellor of Facility Services, railed against the plan after seeing some of its details, saying that much of their savings, an aggressively unrealistic 65% of the budget, comes from reclassifying areas from critical locations to non-critical locations. Under this new plan, there would be exactly one critical location, which is the UT Data Center. 
And while I wouldn't exactly call frat row critical either, the students that live there are. And under these plans, the power, heat, AC, water, and overpriced pod market drinks of any student in any dorm on campus is not critical. And thus can be shut off at impunity. Now, if a university does not think that the care and comfort of its students are the most critical part of its campus, then how on earth are we supposed to take them seriously when they say they want to invest in us? But what can we do? Well, the decision whether to opt into this rests with UT President Jody Pietro and Jimmy Cheek. So you can send emails to any of these people right here and let them know exactly what you think. And you can also go to like the Tennessee is not for sale Facebook page and get involved that way. But what about the larger picture? Like what about corporate corruption or what about Jones Lang LaSalle? Well, you see, what's great about JLL is that they pride themselves on being an ethical company. In fact, it's all over their website. So much so that it's a little bit suspicious. You see, you can only emphasize something so much before it becomes just a little creepy. Sort of like when you're on a tour of a new apartment and the landlord tells you that they have never had a rat problem right when you walk in. And then when you walk into the bedroom and then when you walk into the kitchen and then on the contract that you're gonna sign in big bold letters, it says Rat Free Apartments LLC. It's basically a no-win scenario for you at that point. But thankfully, JLL wins all the time and is a wonderfully ethical company that wants your feedback. They even have a hotline for it. So if you think you've seen any ethical violations during the last 10 minutes and need to inform them on how to grow their corporate culture into something that doesn't look so corrupt and hilariously evil that you could drop it into Blade Runner and it would look normal, then please, give them a call or submit a complaint right here to their 24 hour worldwide hotline. I'm sure they would appreciate that. Thanks for watching everyone. This is Socialized and we will be back in two weeks. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, please like and subscribe to the Daily Beacon YouTube page and share this video all over all your social media platforms. I would very much appreciate it. Also, be sure to check below for links to sources and emails to learn more about our story. And we'll be back in two weeks with a new episode.